welcome everybody here today. Uh, today. First of all, I'm Reggie the Reckless because we're having a little Halloween party today. And, uh, Kalen, what do we have going on here? Is this the Dwight Schrute t-shirt thing we have going on here? Or is, this, is this just regular attire? It's just regular attire. Um, tried to dress up for Halloween, but uh, I just went with something comfortable. Yeah. Well, look, man, I'm glad you're here, dude. We've got the local horror fan. That's your costume, right? Yeah, that's the- me. So what we're doing today, guys, I'm so excited. We are reviewing the new Blu-ray release of Nothing But Trouble, one of the greatest horror movies certainly most underrated horror movie that that term gets thrown around a lot but if any word deserves if any word if any movie deserves to be called underrated there's without no question it's nothing but trouble this is the new shout factory not scream factory but it very well could have been a shout factory movie this is the new shout factory nothing but trouble blu-ray this movie has deserved a release like this for a long time and it's finally here kaylin before we get into the small plot synopsis of this, when was the first time you saw Nothing But Trouble? Uh, it had to be on VHS. So I've, I've only seen it on VHS um, probably, I don't know, 15 years ago. It's been a long time. It's been quite some time. Yeah. Probably f- it, for me, I think what happened was around the mid-2000s when I started becoming a big Chevy Chase fan, I'm the kind of person when I find an actor or somebody I like, I'll mm-hmm. go through their, just, their filmography. And I was going chrono- what's the word? chronologically through Chevy's career. I think I started with that Goldie Hawn movie. And when I worked my way up to the 90s, I was like, this is going to be interesting. Let's see. And when I saw the cover art for this movie online, I was like, what in God's name is this movie going to be about? Nothing but trouble. What is Dan Aykroyd doing in this movie? He looks disgusting. What is this? Uh, and so I watched the movie, and I was stunned by the film that I saw. Because the research I showed showed this was a very big budget movie. Mm-hmm. Look at the stars in the front: Chevy right. Chase, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, Demi Moore. This movie made eight million dollars against like a forty million dollar budget. Well, uh, yeah, which well, you would see, you would would seem to be a failure, box box office failure. But and, but the crazy thing is, I just don't think that the world was ready for nothing but trouble. Right. You actually had a good metaphor for this movie. You said that this movie is a mixture of two films. Could you tell the people? Uh, it feels like a, a, a mixture. It feels like uh, if Texas Chainsaw Massacre had a baby with the Goonies. That's sort of what this movie feels and like. And that, that, I totally agree with that. So a little plot synopsis. We're not going to spoil the movie because if you, only re- if you only watch one movie I review this year, only one, you have to watch, own this movie, Nothing But Trouble. It's one of the most cult, phenomenal, greats ever. Do you want to start out the L- plot? Let tonight? me just echo that. If you've never seen this movie, you have to go see this movie. Get your hands on it and watch this movie as and, soon as you can. And this is the great way to, if you haven't seen it, this, this release right here is fantastic. The new, the new Shout Factory, Nothing But Trouble. The smallest bit of a plot synopsis. So Chevy Chase is a financial publisher, okay? So he does very good, very well in the stock markets. He's doing his thing, living the lap of luxury in New York City. Demi Moore pulls up in an elevator with Chevy and immediately starts bawling her eyes out crying. We, the viewer, have no idea what the hell is going on, but it's funny anyway. And so we learn that Demi has a client that she wants to go confront because they're making a deal that she doesn't approve of. She's a lawyer, and she needs to go to Atlantic City. So Chevy's being the guy that Chevy is. He's like, I'll take you to Atlantic City. So as the night progresses, there's these leech leech people, I call them, that just want to be around Chevy because he's got all the money. And they're like, what are you doing tomorrow, Chevy? Let's hang out with you. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. And Chevy's like, leave me alone, blah, blah, blah. But they won't take no for an answer, and they're like, we're going to go hang out with you tomorrow, Chevy. What are you guys doing? And he's like, well, I'm going to Atlantic City. So the next morning, Demi gets in the car with Chevy as they're getting ready to head out, <laughs> and they think they avoided these people, but as soon as that garage door opens, we see we see the leech people. Yeah, they are. For lack of a better term, the leech people. I think uh, I think Chevy calls them uh, Brazilianaires. Because the, they are Brazilian people, yeah. Brazilianaires. They're funny cat, really funny characters, so... And the, the beautiful thing about this movie, the the beginning of this movie seems like this lovely little date sleepy time m- movie because there's this great Sinatra type music playing. They're in the high ritzy Ritz Carlton type places of of uh, you know New York City, and you're thinking this is going to be this fun little comedy. 
if, if I knew nothing about the movie, if I didn't read the, the back of the box description, I would see Chevy Chase in the first 15 minutes of this movie. I would not have thought this is a horror comedy. Yeah, and, and I do want to emphasize, guys, I think that this movie is in fact got it has in fact so many horror elements because we're going to stop at a certain point with this plot and then I'm going to tell you some of the things that happen in this movie. So, you know, so all of a sudden they get in the car and they're heading down these, the, the GPS takes them down these disgusting dirt roads and all of a sudden a cop starts getting behind Chevy because Chevy was, I think he failed to stop at a stop sign. He didn't stop all the way. And so the Brazilianaires in the back are like, come on, man, this car is fast. Just gun it. So Chevy being the man that he is, he's like, screw it. I'll gun it. <laughs> and so finally... The cop catches up to him, which is John Candy, because these dirt roads are owned by this crazy old man who owns all this land and property, and he makes these crazy detours happen to where Chevy has to take these weird U-turns and hard lefts on these dirtier dirt roads, and it leads him to Vulcanvania. Vulcanvania. Which is the name of the town that they live in. And it's so it's so cool because at the beginning of the... Uh the scene where John Candy is is starting to chase the car, you see he has these uh, switches in his car, and he like James Bond style <laughs> flips switches for for different things. Yeah, it, it was the funniest thing. You just see the, the the dash of this car, cop car, and you see a finger go <laughs> hit this thing, and then this massive <laughs> this massive detour, you know, roadblock thing just comes out of the trees into the road. It was it's it's so funny, so. They lend they, the John Candy's like, okay, guys, the way things work out here is you got to go get tried by the judge. You have to go to court. It's like, it's a very speedy, so it would seem, process. So they go to the Vulcanvania house, which looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm -hmm. house, which is where these elements start to kick in. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's creepy as hell. You pull up and you are. Welcome to one of the nastiest but most incredible characters I think I've ever seen in a movie. Is that safe to say? Uh, yeah, he's revolting. And what we're talking about is Dan Aykroyd as Judge Vulcanheiser, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court Justice of Vulcanvania. <laughs> Who's like maybe 200 years old. You're not real sure. The makeup effects for the judge are so disgusting. I mean, words can't even begin to describe it. The dialogue, I urge you, and I think you'll agree, you have to make sure you have the subtitles on <laughs> because you have you won't believe the 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 lines mm -hmm. that the judge says in this movie. This movie is so bizarre. I can't believe it got this is one of those movies that when you see it you say to yourself, "Can you believe this got made?" Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I've never seen a movie with this kind of temperament before. It's truly remarkable. Each scene keeps getting crazier and crazier what this judge wants. And I don't want to I really don't want to spoil too much more, but just know that this movie, when I say this movie has extreme horror elements, Kaylin, what happens to a lot of the people that enter into this courthouse? Just tell the people that. What happens when the judge does not like them? Right. Well, it seems like uh like the the judge has a a very uh strong prejudice against uh, gang gangsters, drug dealers, just uh, pimps, general bad bad guys, and so, bankers, and bankers. So uh, if you if you get if you get tried guilty, then you uh, uh, there's a a series of uh, trap doors. People fall through the doors. There's floors that are moving, like like tread floors turn into treadmills, and they just start f going to the side. And you, <laughs> it it drags people out of the house. It's amazing. What happens to the people after that? They get dumped into a uh, like a little roller coaster cart. Uh, take a the zaniest roller coaster ride into a giant death machine that's called Mister Bone Stripper. <laughs> the Bone Stripper. The Bone yeah, Stripper. Yeah. The bone yeah. stripper. yeah. So the bone stripper gets you if you uh, if you're guilty, and then he'll eat you later on as a hot dog. Oh. Can we talk about the, the the dinner scene real quick? Might be one of my favorite scenes in the whole. Can movie. you set up? Can you describe this scene to the to the people watching? What do you see when we get to the dinner scene where Chevy, Demi, and all are sitting at the table? What do we see at the table? So a giant table, and everyone's sitting at the table. 
and and uh, the judge sits down and he he's got so many different levers and and you you have to see this movie. Let me just say it's a lot of levers. I'm not going to do any of this justice until you see the movie. But I'll pull up a couple pictures while you're describing. Okay, this. so so the uh, so part of the table drops down and there's a model train that pops up and the whole train is a, a condiment train. <laughs> With uh, with little pickles, with a catapulting pickle shooter, and uh, to, it's it's wacky. And so it's the, truly wacky. And this train is going around the table, and people are trying to hit the squirters to get some ketchup or mustard, but the train's flying all around. Ants on a log, mm-hmm. and these must have been the biggest. And you know, if you know what I'm talking about, it's the what is the celery, celery peanut, peanut butter, raisins, and raisins. Yeah. And these are logs. These suckers were. To me, had to grab one with two hands. Yeah. I mean, it was so big. You know, and then John Candy is a he plays a double role mm-hmm. in this movie. He plays possible triple role. Triple role. Yeah. We got to look into that. John Candy plays the most normal character, the relatable character in this movie, I would say, and he also plays the granddaughter of of the great Judge Vulcan Vulcanheiser mm-hmm. Visor, whatever his name is. Um, and at one point, they had both characters on the screen at the same time. Yeah, which I was pretty. Which was a pretty with. cool effect because they talked to each other for a second, which wasn't something new to this movie, but it was done very well mm-hmm. in this movie. So that scene is amazing, but it keeps getting darker and crazier. There are the 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 grandsons of the junkyard. Little D Bub is one of them, and the make describe the makeup to the people of, of these of the grandsons in the junkyard. Just the the practical makeup in this movie is is just it's revolting, but it's done so well. Yeah. So these two, uh, they're like mutated baby, big fat mutated <laughs> beer belly, and they're blacksmiths, uh, and they're uh, and they play cards uh, in the junkyard. In the junkyard, and, and the judge. The grandpa will not let them in the house no, either. They're, they're not so allowed dirty. in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know. I, f- I feel like, uh, you know, Dan Aykroyd wrote the screenplay, and I, f- I feel like he was just in the pocket with his performance the entire movie. Every time he's on the S- screen. Steals the, steals steals the show. Yeah. So funny. Absolutely. So this, like I said, I, I think we've kind of set up the plot. So this judge has has strong prejudice against criminals but specifically bankers, and you'll understand mm-hmm. why when you see the movie, and that's where we'll stop. But one thing I gotta add before we wrap up the review and we talk about this Blu-ray: once you think this movie can't get any crazier, what what music celebrity shows up in this movie? Just when you think it can't get any wild, who shows up in this so, movie? So, so uh, there's a couple of scenes where where different people come into the the judge's courtroom. Um, and I believe on, on, there's a, a group that comes in, in a hearse and you start hearing the, uh, woo, 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 kind of, uh, ba- bassy hip hop kind of, uh, music yeah. and in comes, uh, um, digital underground, which, uh, had a huge hit, the Humpty, the Humpty dance mm-hmm. with uh, shock G and, uh, and Tupac, Tupac. Tupac Shakur yeah. is in nothing but I th- trouble. I think it's his first his first uh, film credit. I think so. Yeah, was nothing but trouble. And clearly his best movie he's ever done. <laughs> Forget, yeah. Forget New Jack City. Yeah, it's all about nothing. But in all seriousness, <laughs> yes, Tupac Shakur is in nothing but trouble. Mm-hmm. And basically, there's a music video in this movie, right? And I think if you actually pull up the music video for the song, I mean, it's it's it's, pretty much it's the, the video, scene, right? <laughs> it's the scene. Great song. I mean, it's. I was telling, we were listening to the song on the way over here. It's impossible to listen to all around the world same song without just bobbing your head. All around the world, <laughs> uh, come to the party to get naughty, <laughs> eat popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, guys, you have to see this movie. Now, just a few things about this Blu-ray. Like I've said, this is the uh, the Shout Select release. This is looks. This movie looks great. One thing I was I don't know if you noticed this too, Kalen. I think I was talking to you about this. The opening scene almost looks like it's just a little bit better than the DVD release. But once we got out of that, I mean, mm. the movie shined. Oh, for sure. It, it was quite pretty remarkable well i had not seen it since uh since the vhs days so it was uh it was a huge uh improvement in uh picture quality of course uh, it looked beautiful but once they got out of the landscape of like the the city the new york the area. new york city and then kind of went to this uh vulcanvania area 
the the color contrast just looked uh, amazing. I and, know it, it truly was remarkable. Yeah. So I was almost worried. I was like, did they not really get a good transfer for this Blu-ray? But that opening and the opening scene doesn't look bad, but it's just there is a an extremely noticeable difference once they get into the car after ten minutes of the film and they start heading towards Atlantic City. It, it looked amazing. Uh, there are some great special features on here. We we started listening to the Dan Aykroyd one, which I, we didn't finish it, but I can tell he is going to, which it sounds like this movie, as crazy as it sounds, is based on a true story, mm-hmm. based on what he was getting into. Um, and then they also had an interview with Chevy Chase. The only downside was you don't see Chevy. They got they, they recorded his voice, and the voice was great. And But what was great, uh, Kalen, was he was very happy mm-hmm. talking about this film. So... I was pleased uh, with uh, with hearing about that and how gr- he he just praises Dan Aykroyd. He loves Dan. He talks about how how really smart Dan. Of a, right. He's a yeah. brilliant co- comedian. From what I took away, he he was just excited to be on the project, no matter what it was. Uh, he was such a um, a fan and friend of of Dan Aykroyd that he was. I don't I don't know that he's proud of this movie. I don't know that he loves to be associated if this is one of his top roles in his opinion but i know a lot of people love him in this movie yeah chevy and chevy is great i was telling him you know when chevy does a movie especially during the 90s some of his films his resistance to the material because he he, it makes him a little more of a jerk in the movie and it was perfect it really was perfect he was so good in this movie he under it, it was he he just did a great job it's one of my favorite chevy chase movies you know, period. I mean, it's probably my favorite Dan Aykroyd performance ever as the judge. It has to be seen to be believed. A movie like this would never get made again. Not not because it's not PC or, or that kind of stuff. I mean, it could because it's it doesn't have anything ridiculously bad, but it's just so outlandish. I can't see any studio. Warner Brothers, for God's sakes, they made this. They mm-hmm. paid for this movie. But it only made $8 million, so maybe it was a little bit before its own time. Maybe so, but... Clearly a cult phenomenal hit now. People have fallen in love with nothing but trouble. Great cast. Everybody's funny. A great movie. This is a great release, guys. The film looks amazing. You got any final thoughts on nothing but trouble? Just if you don't have it in your collection, it's definitely one to put there. Yeah, without yeah. question. And it, this release is a great way to go for it, guys. So I'll leave my Amazon affiliate link down below. If you use that, it doesn't cost you a penny extra. I think I get seven cents off of the sale, and which is cool. But if not, just go to Amazon and get this. Go to, go. Maybe it'll show up at FYEs or Best Buys, but make sure you get nothing but trouble. If you don't pick up any movie that I recommend this year, if you only pick up one, without question, nothing but trouble is the movie to have. And after you get done with that, go go to Spotify or YouTube and go look up some Digital Underground because mm. all around the world. Good, same yeah, film. good soundtrack all around. I thought there were some great tracks in yeah. there. Yeah. So be good, guys. You'll end up in the Bone Stripper. Happy Halloween. This is the ho- local horror fan, Kalen and Reggie the Reckless here. Nothing But Trouble is a phenomenal movie. Get it. See you guys later.